Hey guys, I've got something to show you. This is the Arduino Zero Pro released by Arduino SRL or Arduino.org. It's a 32-bit compatible uh, Arduino compatible microcontroller and it's got the same sort of footprint as the Arduino Uno. Now before we get really into it, there is a bit of controversy surrounding this board because Arduino SRL split from Arduino LLC, which is Arduino.cc uh, and there's still got some stuff going around with the trademarks. So at the moment I consider this to be a clone board uh, until any of those things are resolved and that's how I see it. So I don't mind buying this or, or getting hold of it. In fact, I got it from these guys, uh, Cool Components. Uh, they're a lovely little company with a great team behind them uh, and they have good support and they sent this to me to review. So we're gonna have a look at it. If you wanna take a look at uh, the Cool Components website, there's a, a link in the description somewhere down there and uh, you can have a look at their product page. So this is the box the Zero Pro comes in. It's just a little tiny thing. There's not much in here apart from the board and a couple of little uh, bits of documentation. It doesn't come in any kind of anti-static shielding, so I'll be careful, but I think I've just grounded myself, so I'll be okay. So this is what we get. We get, um, thank you for supporting Arduino. Again, controversial, so we'll get rid of that. And a couple of stickers, so we'll get rid of that too. So the Zero Pro is a 3.3 volt, 32 bit evolution of the Uno format. And it's powered by a, uh, a SAM D21, uh, I think it's G18A actually, ARM Cortex uh, Intel chip. And it runs at uh, 48 megahertz. Um, it's got 14 uh, IO, digital IO running along the board there. And it's got six uh, 12 bit analog pins. Um, and one of those is actually an analog out. Uh, so it's an, a DAC uh, capable of 10-bit uh, precision. So I think it's, it's uh, analog zero is the 10-bit DAC that, uh, that can be used. All of the pins will operate at 3.3 volts, but with a maximum of seven milliamps uh, out, which is likely to mean that you're gonna need to use some external circuitry to drive something like a white LED uh, through a transistor or something like that, because seven milliamps isn't an awful lot and that that is the limit unfortunately in comparison with the uno uh, that would have kicked out 40 milliamps per io pin at at maximum you wouldn't usually run it like that but certainly um, led capable it supports all of your normal communication types so spi i2c uh, it's got serial on board it also has a, a virtual serial port we'll talk more about that in a minute but it also supports uh, TWI, JTAG, and SWD as well. Now, looking around this board, it, it seems very similar to maybe a, an Arduino or a Leonardo, but there are a couple of big things you'll notice on this board. Um, first off, uh, you've got this blue sticker which says limited edition. Now, under that resides a chip, uh, and that is the embedded debugger. And you'll also notice there are two USB ports there. One of them says programming, and one says native USB. Now, the thing covered up there with the limited edition sticker is the Atmel embedded debugger chip. Now this gives you a full hardware debugging interface uh, and the native USB there is a is capable of being a, a USB host. It'll also power the board or it can be used to emulate a mouse or keyboard just like uh, USB HID stuff or like on the Leonardo. There's a, there's a different kind of power regulation going on as well so you won't see uh, a massive sort of linear regulator, you'll see that they've got a switching regulator just there. That's the LM27347 switching step down chip. And it means that it, it steps down the voltage you put in, either through the DC jack or through any of the USBs to 3.3 volts. Now the board itself has 256 kilobytes of flash memory available and 32 kilobytes of SRAM available. Um, you also get 16 kilobytes of EEPROM, but apparently that's by emulation. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, whether that means some of the flash memory is, uh, is pushed towards this virtual EEPROM, I'm not sure. Now, if we look at these two boards side by side, you won't notice much of a difference here. Uh, some of the component placements is a little different. I think they've used some different passive components, but essentially the whole board is the same. So this is the Arduino.cc, or the Arduino LLC version, and this is the Arduino SRL, or Arduino.org version. The Arduino.cc version hasn't been released yet. It says it's coming soon still, 
but the SRL version has been released. Now, you can use their IDE, which is essentially the same as the uh, Arduino.cc IDE, to program this board. That works perfectly, but there hasn't yet been an official release on the Arduino.cc website that covers their Arduino Zero. Incidentally, the difference between the Zero and the Pro is is probably only really the fact this one says Pro and this one doesn't. There are no debugging options yet um, in the official IDE, but we can do that now using the Atmel Studio and something called Visual Micro, which is a plugin for Atmel Studio. So let's take a look at it. Okay, once you've installed the Arduino IDE from arduino.org, because that's the one that supports this board at the moment, I'm using 1.5.8.3. Um, you can find that in the previous versions bit. And you've also installed Atmel Studio with the Visual Micro plugin. You can get started. So I've written a little bit of code here. All it does is it has a counter. It uses uh, blinking without, without a delay. And it also has a couple of LEDs on there that are set via some Booleans here. Um, so I'm going to upload that to the board. It'll take a few seconds. This one's a little bit slow. It's uploading via the program port programming port so it means that uh, the board will completely erase the chip when it's uploaded. Okay so it's started now we're getting a little bit of extra information coming out on the output here and it's saying it's uploading via SWD and it's running at 500 kilohertz. I think that's the the safe area for the chip to to run at. So we've just got our flashing LED going on here that's coming from this interval here of one second or 1000 milliseconds. So we don't now need that. All we need to do is copy all of that code and then we can get started. So what we wanna do in Atmel Studio is create a new project. So if you click new project and then we need to create an Arduino sketch, 32 bit due or zero. Now, the beta version of Visual Micro supports the zero at the moment. So we're just going to create a sketch. We don't need to name it anything in particular. So we'll go for sketch one. So if you click OK. Now, you can't upload using Atmel Studio just at the moment. I'm sure in the future, once the, both of the boards from Arduino CC and Arduino Org are released, then the, uh, the software will get updated. But for now, we can't. So. Once we've got our sketch loaded in the Solution Explorer, we can open up the sketch. We're going to paste in everything we've written. Now, if you've got some libraries and stuff that you're using, the Visual Micro software will pull that in as well. But uh, I'm not using any libraries. I'm just using the standard Arduino code. And it pulls in all those dependencies as well, so we don't need to worry. Uh, once we've done that, um, I'm just going to change the chip up here. At the moment, it's defaulted to the Dew chip, which is the AT-SAM3X8E. Um, we're going to change that to the one that's used on the Zero Pro, which is an AT-SAM-D21G18A. Um, once this loads up, we'll change the chip and then we'll, um, we'll build our project. I'm not sure if you need to change it to build the project, but I think it's probably a good idea. So we'll select SAM-D, all parts. Scroll to near the bottom and there it is. So we click OK. And you can see there the supported tools include uh, the EDBG, the embedded debugger. So we'll just click Save. We'll go back to our sketch. And then we want to build, build solution. And you'll see down here it's going to start building. And there we go, it's finished. And binary sketch size is uh, 10 kilobytes. So once we've done that, we can close the solution and we'll click save on this. So click yes. And then we're gonna open the solution for debugging. So open object file for debugging. Now we've already got the code on the device. We did that with the IDE, so we don't need to worry about um, uploading through Atmel Studio. We're going to select the file that we want. So sketch one, uh, debug, and it's an ELF file, which I think is very cute, but I don't know what ELF stands for. So we just click open, next, and then it's going to ask us to select the right chip that we're using. So device family is SAMD, 
and we know it's around the bottom there it is and then we click finish and it will load that in and you'll see we've got our CPP file here uh, and this is our code this is the same code that we've got on the device So we now need to select our debug tool. Up here you can see a bit where it says no tool, but we know there's uh, an embedded debugger on the device and it also knows that because it knows about this chip and what it supports. So uh, on the virtual COM port, we've got this embedded debugger and that's all we need to do. Just click save, go back to our CC CPP file and then we can start debugging. There's a little button here that says start debugging. But before we do that, we want to add a trace or an interval, uh, trace on the interval or on the counter or on anything really. So what we can do is uh, we'll go down to something that happens. So what we've, we've got a counter adding here. So if I right click, I can add a breakpoint, insert a trace point and then I can get it to output that uh, counter to our display. So all I need to write is the value is, and then add our, oh, I put the wrong brackets in. We can add our variable and then close that. And we can select whether we want it to break on that point or whether we want it to continue. And we want it to continue just so we can monitor that value. Then we can start debugging. So just click start debugging and it will show the output once all of this starts. So we've got these sections here and we can see what the breakpoints are. We can see what the call stack command window, but we want to see the output. So you can see here it's kicking out. This is without any serial print lines or anything like that. So it's kicking out what the value is. If I just pause this now, so I can click break all, and that will pause the program, it jumps to the line that it's just written, just been doing in the processor. So we can go back to our sketch. We can actually see what's in the memory here. So we can see the base flash and the user page. So the user page is the, the stuff that we've written to the board and the flash is its current memory points. Um, but if we go back here to counter, we can actually change the value of counter to 122 so currently it sits oops so so currently it is sitting at 11 but now if i continue we can click continue it should show that the value is 122 unless it's gone past that and we're going to go on to 123 so we'll just click continue and there we go we've got 122 in the output so we've changed a value that's currently in the program via the debugger. We can also do that with other things. So in my sketch here, I've got an if statement. So if the value is a thousand, then it's going to turn those LEDs on. So let's pause again. So this is the point where it's broken in the program. So let's change that value now to 997. So the counter now sits at 997. Once it gets to 1000, it's gonna turn those LEDs on. And all I need to do now is click continue and just wait a couple of seconds and it will turn those LEDs on. So we're 998, 999, 1000. And then both of our LEDs are on. We can also turn those LEDs off now individually. They're being lit up based on a Boolean. So if I go down here to LED one Boolean, I can change that to a zero. And then I need to also change the counter back to a value that's not gonna restart that, um, that uh, if statement there. So I've changed it back to one. Now if I continue, the first LED is going to turn off or the second LED. I think I've done the wrong value, but so you can see that you can change these various points in here. You can also mess around with the code by running to a certain point. So we could right click here and say run to cursor. So it will only run the program up until that point. So it's like setting a temporary break, but you just run that part of the program. So there we are. It's just run the program up until the previous millis. Now we can also run it to 
here. Or we can just continue by stepping to the next statement each time. So that's debugging on the Arduino Zero Pro using the Atmel Studio and a great visual micro plugin. And I, I really advise that you pick it up. It's a really nice way to learn how to do this. So let's look at the pros and cons. We'll start with the cons because, um, you know, we should. So the cons, uh, ignoring the embedded debugger and uh, perhaps USB host, the Teensy 3.1 probably comes close to beating this in terms of features. Uh, and it's got a lot more software out there uh, that support it. And it, it's also, there are many more examples out there of people using it in projects. So it's worthwhile having a look, but this, I really think will be a nice board, especially when Arduino CC comes out with their, or LLC comes out with theirs, the, the community is gonna take off massively, but the, the hardware is exactly the same. If you rely on five volt electronics, which I sort of do most of the time, then you're gonna have a hard time dealing with 3.3 volt boards. You're gonna to have to do a lot of level shifting uh, and you're, you're gonna to have to worry about providing two different uh, types of power most of the time. I don't know what the five volt pin on this board will kick out, but it may not be enough to drive some of the things that you want to drive. So you might have to look at powering some of your circuits separately, which is some of, something people with an Uno might not be used to. The software support isn't quite there, but it will be. I'm very sure that they're gonna come out with a new IDE which supports this board for Arduino.cc, but Arduino.org also have theirs out now but I think they're gonna add hardware debugging to the IDE, I'm pretty sure of it. But in the meantime, you can use Visual Micro and you can use things like Atmel Studio or Visual Studio from Microsoft. And they're both free products that you can pick up. There's a community edition that you can use. Uh, I was a little bit skeptical about how useful the embedded debugger would be, but I've been completely turned around. I think it's great to be able to see inside, see what the chip's doing, be able to pause it in your program and just say, stop there, I wanna check my values or change them or just completely stop the program if you want to. I think it, it's a brilliant addition and it's something I'll be looking into uh, exploring further. Some of you out there will have used embedded de debuggers before, um, but it's new to me, perhaps old hat to you, but I'm very excited about it. Well, it's got that extra memory, so we're looking at quite a uh, hefty amount of space really in comparison to an Uno or many, many of the, uh, the Arduino development boards that are around at the moment. It has a 48 megahertz processor. Now that is slower than the DU, but, um, or DUA, I'm not sure how you say it, uh, but it's still up there, it's still good. It's a lot better than your 16 megahertz that you can get from your Uno. So overall, it's really nice addition to the Uno family, I guess. It's a nice evolution of that, that kind of Arduino ecosystem for these sort of size boards. 